Hello. So I haven't talked to you guys in this long-winded format in a while. There's a few things I want to cover and one of them is I feel like if you are really true to something or about something you don't have to say it and actually when people do make statements like I am this, I am that, I do this, I'm into that, then I, I almost believe them less because it's like you have to proclaim it uh, and it feels like overcompensation to me. So for example, I actually had an instance, maybe I'll tell you guys the details uh, a little later, but I had someone I was speaking with and I was in a very vulnerable place and we were talking about something very personal to me and this person wasn't very sensitive about it and I was crying and I was explaining how the conversation was going in a way that felt really just attacking to me and even though I was crying my speech and the I guess sentences I was structuring were super neutral and this person goes well I am going to say and tell you the truth I'm not scared of you and that bothered me and to be honest it still bothers me because to give you a little bit more context this was actually a paid session with someone so I'm thinking I am crying in a very like open state of vulnerability I'm actually paying you financially compensating you to assist me in working through this dilemma with me you are in fact the person of authority here and you look at me and say that you're not scared of me and I'm like what the fuck is that what do you mean because like for one what is there to be scared of like I'm paying you and I'm crying <laughs> right like you are the figure of authority in this dynamic here right I'm coming to you for your assistance so it was later on and really in that moment where I realized like if you are claiming like I'm not scared of you that's more for your ears than it is for mine and I think about this like there was another person I met in a boxing club capacity and we were talking about men and I had made the comment like I like bold men and it's <laughs> later proclaimed to be like oh yeah well I'm really bold and, and I'm bold in that situation and I like did this boldly and it's like one of those things where it's like if you're actually bold you don't have to say that if you're actually about it you don't have to say it you are that you are it like it's all over you people can read it people know off sight people know off the feeling people can tell off of what you exude you don't gotta say shit so this is <laughs> what i'm saying is, is like when people start to make those kind of proclamations or declarations about themselves who they are what they're about um what they think what their interest is what their preference is it's just like it, it, are, are you sure because i think you're telling yourself that more than you're telling me that and to have someone like as a witness to that is just proving it to you but once again if you really were about it you wouldn't have to say shit so that's that's my personal thoughts on it but i did listen to something recently that kind of countered this idea where i was like okay maybe i need to have a little bit more compassion or like give a little bit more grace here so the thought was some people really feel good and source their power when they're speaking things out loud so and i understand that concept of voicing something to power and the second part of this is actually not saying anything at all and holding something sacred so holding it true to you and when you keep it close and when you keep it in its sacredity that to me holds power that to me is like okay i have it i am acknowledging something 
I am not letting it disperse by saying it out loud, sharing it with other people. So I was like, okay, well, I know I definitely connect with the second one. Like there is something about privacy. There is a element of modesty and I believe in the element of mystery and not even in the sense of manipulation necessarily, but for this concept of holding things sacred, holding things dear. So when someone is operating outside of that, to me, it feels ostentatious. And once again, it feels disingenuous because I'm like, if it's really that real, if you're really with what you're saying you're with, I, you know, it's, it's all over you. It's all over you. So that is something that I've been sitting with and thinking about a little bit more. And even though I do hold that belief system, listening to someone say, nah, there are people who have that type of revival and that expression outwardly and that does serve a purpose so i'm like okay all right i'll take it i'll take it the other thing is i was thinking recently <laughs> about a friend of mine and he delivers truth in such a unique way and i think he's one of the best like truth bearers that i know personally and what he does is two things. He's very clear and he's very to the point about what he's saying, but it's like, he still holds my heart and mind. Like he's still in consideration of my emotional reaction to it. And that you don't find very often. People either teeter totter or like tiptoe around the truth. So they're not very clear about what they mean, which he is very clear. There's a lot of clarity there or they are super clear, straight to the point without any type of emotional consideration. So it feels like this dagger to you. And there is a way that he has combined that. And I think that's super valuable. And once again, a very rare skill, I think very difficult to do. So adding on top of that, one of the things I have realized is that the truth is very simple. And I think if things are too complicated or too complex, there's not enough truth in it. And this goes for several things. This goes for like relationships. If it's very unclear what's going on, <laughs> there's probably not a lot of honesty between those people. This is big corporations. So I think of our legal system. I think of our medical insurance <laughs> system where no one can understand, like any, barely anyone can understand their own insurance plan. And it's like, to me, there's not enough truth in its foundation. The truth is very simple. The truth is very clear. And on top of that, I did want to just make a point that the pharmaceutical industry and the insurance industry do have their reputations. And I have, my parents have worked in both of them. So my mom was a pharmacist. She was not retired. My dad is actually an insurance agent. And they are very, very honest people very honest and held with integrity and it wasn't until I was in my 20s where I realized that disparity I was like wow I always knew my parents as being very honest but I didn't realize that they were honest within a dishonest structure and here's one of the things that I connected is my mom was a stickler for checking and in her personality that woman does not move off her square until it is very clear until you communicate to her in a way where she understands it if she doesn't understand it she doesn't trust you to lead her like it doesn't matter if i understand it it doesn't matter if i'm her daughter if she trusts my thinking anything like that if she doesn't understand it in a way that's clear to her she doesn't go with it and she won't let the conversation carry forward until she knows <laughs> which has been so aggravating in some ways but it's something I respect, but this is the thing about my mom is, you know, I always thought like she's uh, a New York Capricorn, right? So she doesn't, she cuts the fat off everything. She doesn't want any extra fluff on anything. So I, I've known that about her, but that's what it is. She wants you to boil it down to its true essence. And if it's, and she can sense very quickly when something isn't true or super honest and she makes you simplify it to its bare bones. And that is what she took to her with her in her work as a pharmacist and what she takes with her always. 
in our interpersonal relationships and just casual relationships, all of it. That woman is a great read and it's for that instance, the simplicity of it. Now, my father was an insurance agent, loves what he does. He loves, 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 and he helps a lot of people. And that's what's made him so successful is when he's brilliant business acumen as well. But he is helping and he sincerely believes that and witnessing him, I know that's true. So one of the things he's been able to do is he teaches community classes. So he for free goes out to the community and does these intro classes on social security and Medicare on the insurance. And almost every single feedback I have heard from people who come to me about my dad in a professional capacity is they say he makes it easy. He makes it so I understand. And that's the thing too about kind of that slimy business salesman type of thing. Oh, sorry, there's a bird that scared me. Is they confuse you, right? Like you're you're not clear. It's like razz pizzazz, right? All of this, all of this, all of this. And then you get kind of lost in the selling of it. But my dad takes something very complicated and breaks it down to where it's very simple so you can understand it, you can repeat it. And that makes people feel comfortable, right? Because he's honest. And I'm, And then I thought, I was like, damn, I feel like that simple man, you know, those simple men and not to generalize, but like, those are usually honest men. Like those are the ones who don't want any gossip, don't want the bullshit. They don't want any of the bells and whistles. They're simple. I just, <laughs> I just want this at this time of day. I want to be here when I need to be here. I want to talk to you when I think it's relevant. I'm going to speak when there's only something to say, right? Like simple men are honest men. And that is something I just wanted to offer and reiterate to all of you is that the truth is simple. The truth is very simple. If it's too complicated, there's not enough truth in it. I really believe that. I felt like there was a third point I've been learning and wanting to uh, cover with you guys. Hmm. As I said that, I'm thinking of, I'm just going to talk out loud and see if I come to it. A friend of mine who is an international athlete, very good, very focused, and I have a lot of respect for him. And there's something where like we don't always like meet up or like connect, but there is this eye to eye, like hard work recognizes hard work. And I have to respect the intensity, the focus, and it goes back to he plays basketball, so it's like. Roy doesn't need to say, I'm a basketball player. Anytime you look at him or you're on his social media, like he's playing basketball. He has a basketball with him. If he's doing personal training with people, I did a session with him, he threw me a basketball. He includes a basketball, literally, <laughs> in his personal training. You know, there's all of these things that allude back to what he does and that is also just circling back to he doesn't have to say shit we already know we already know he's he's about it he is it so he doesn't have to say it hmm. I don't know maybe I'm supposed to come back to that full circle moment but all right cool I uh, just finished my mile this was actually my second mile, so I'm sweating a little bit. But yeah, no, this was good for me. I've been doing a lot of this actually, where I have these sort of like do, 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 all of these dots and ideas. And then something happens where a string connects them all. And then I feel like I want to talk to everyone about it, but then I have to talk to them through this whole path of how I got there. <laughs> so it's um, tough and it's also long. So a lot of these ideas and thought processes that I've been having, I have been working on Instagram um, and doing reels. So I've been shortening everything and trying to make it very concise, which has been a good practice to summarize. As I've been telling everyone, Mark Twain has this quote where he apologizes. He says, I'm sorry for writing a long letter. If I had more time, I would have written you a short one right just to the point that it does take more effort 
and more time and concentration to condense ideas and to make things short, concise, and to the point. So I've been exercising that muscle. I've been practicing, but this has felt good to just come spew some words at you guys for 15 minutes. I really do appreciate it. Um, I'm thankful for all of you who've tapped in, even if it was just for a second. There is something very important about the witness. There is something very valuable about speaking out your thoughts, sharing your creations, and having it bounce off of others. There is value in that because the light, you don't know what, what it is until a light bounces off of an object, correct? Because light could travel forever and ever and ever and ever, right? And that's it. It would just keep continuously traveling. But it is when the bounce hits something and reflects off of it, you know what the light is and you know what the light is illuminating the object. So I do feel like in the witness, when people listen or when people watch me or anything like that, whether your intentions are beneficial or unbeneficial or whatever judgment you may have, I do still feel that that is an important part and that reflecting off of others is part of this process. And I am very, very grateful for that. I am very thankful for the witness. So yes, much love. And as always, just some thoughts.